This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. President Trump made a case for a border wall during his Oval Office address Tuesday night, saying there's a crisis at the southern border and the wall would address illegal immigration, drugs and crime. Congressional Democratic leaders were quick to denounce the wall. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer say the president is manufacturing a crisis and called for an end to the partial government shutdown now in week three. Tribes across the country are feeling the impacts of the shutdown, including on the Wind River Reservation, as Wyoming Public Radio's Melody Edwards reports. Already, some seasonal transportation employees had to be laid off because of the shutdown. Eastern Shoshone Counselor Leslie Shakespeare says the U.S. Bureau of Indian Affairs also canceled a regular meeting to determine how much to pay tribal members in their per capita checks. That's their cut on profits from oil and gas projects in the reservation. He says because of the shutdown, tribal members won't get those checks in February. Those are small amounts, but they're amounts that they're able to survive on. And those amounts aren't there, then it becomes an issue because now they don't have nothing to um, survive on for the next month. The northern Arapaho tribe that shares the reservation took over management of its federal health clinic three years ago. That means most health care workers can still get their paychecks. But Wind River Cares Clinic CEO Richard Brannon says every month the government covers only 32 percent of their health care needs. And because of the shutdown, that's shrunk to just 20 percent. Uh, We're already starting out at negative 68%. And so what little money we do receive has even more a uh, more profound effect on us than another clinic that receives 100% of funding. He says the shutdown has also hurt the morale of the clinic's remaining federal employees that are right now working without pay. I'm Melody Edwards. People on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation want to see more done when indigenous women go missing. The community recently held services for Henny Scott, who was found dead in December, about three weeks after her family last spoke with her. Yellowstone Public Radio's Kayla DeRoche has more. There's a large white teepee set up in the front yard and a fire in front of it. People come and go in the hours before the funeral, and family friend Dean Wallowing Bull is among them. This fire will burn until they get ready to go and lay her to rest, and then the fire will be extinguished. It'll go out like our lives. On December 28th, a search party discovered the body of 14-year-old Henny Scott outside Lame Deer. Henny's mother, Paula Castro Stops, sits in the teepee and talks about Henny. She was into everything. There was nothing she couldn't do. She, I mean, she could do it all. She start taking up beating, and which I was proud of. She started learning Cheyenne, and her teacher commented how well she was doing. Castro Stops also speaks about the difficulty of getting help from the authorities when she noticed her daughter was missing. She says she had to speak with law enforcement on both the Northern Cheyenne and the Crow Reservations before they stepped in. Castro Stops says she wants to see that change. I want something done. I want, like, a process to where it's not going to take this long. You don't have to jump through hoops that they do their job and, you know, take you seriously. Castro stops together with Wallowing Bull and other members of the community are trying to change what they see as a flawed system. Wallowing Bull has been helping to organize marches in the community of Lame Deer and says they want to remember Henny. They also want to remember her death and the actions that followed. For National Native News, I'm Kayla DeRoche. And I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced at the Annenberg National Native Voice Studios by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation. Funding is by Odawi Law Group, provider of Indian Law Solutions, and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, with support from the Public Radio Satellite System. Support for law and justice-related programming provided by Hobbs, Strauss, Dean, and Walker, LLP, a national law firm dedicated to promoting and defending tribal rights for more than 30 years. More information available at HobbsStrauss.com. Support by BNSF Railway Company. BNSF honors the commitment of Armed Forces members and is a top employer for U.S. military veterans, hiring over 9,000 veterans since 2005. More at jobs.bnsf.com. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.